Hey guys, welcome back to my next Unity tutorial video. So the ball is going to bounce around and it's also going to be hit, it's going to hit these paddles and it's also going to come out one of these edges. And right now, if it came out one of those edges, it would just fly off into space and the game would be pretty terrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a cube and we're going to position this cube at 0, 0, 0. And we're going to scale this cube. 20. Yep, 20. I'm going to drag this over to this part of the world. And then we're going to duplicate it and drag it over to the other part. And 15.5. Negative 15.5. So now we have an entire box surrounding us. But this isn't how Hong normally looks because this part is not supposed to be visible so I'm going to go ahead and check the mesh renderer and now you can see the green outline for the collider but not the white box for the actual image do the same thing for the other one and we're going to, these are going to be our goals this is going to be the player goal and this is going to be the enemy goal and now, when the ball hits these, they will still bounce off and it will still act as though there was a physical cube here because there are not triggers. So we're going to also check the trigger box. And now the ball will fly through these, but it will send a message when it does. And we're going to use that message to reset the ball's position. Alright, so let's go ahead and add a new script. We'll call this one ball. Because right now, since we turned off gravity on the ball, this thing, would, this thing won't move anymore. It'll just stay there, as you saw before. So, we're going to need to give this ball some force at the beginning. And then let our uh, physics collisions bounce it around. So, drag the script to the ball object. You can see it's there. Go back over to your uh, model develop, click on the ball script. And we're also going to give this thing a public float speed. And we're going to make a, a public function. Call it vset. And this function is going to set the ball's position. Uh, transform dot and we're going to set this position to zero 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 so now whenever this function is called it's going to set the position to zero and we're also going to add a force to this which is just rigid body dot add force new vector three um, for now, we're just going to do speed, speed, zero. And this will be a force. Let's try impulse and see what happens. Okay. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to also call this function right here as well. So once again, you see that it has this little field here, so let's go ahead and put one. See how fast that moves, it moves really fast. So we can also times this by time, delta time, time, delta time. Now it moves really slow, so we also want to up this up to about five. And now it's bouncing around. And well, apparently I had to hit it. But alright, so the ball is bouncing. We can make it go faster if we wanted to. But right now it's fine for our purposes. Alright, so these goals are going to send a message whenever the ball passes into it. So we need to define that message. So we're going to go ahead and add a script, call it goal, 
I'm going to take this and drag it to the player goal and to the enemy goal. You'll get the same script because they're both going to do the same thing. Go to goal. And the only thing this is going to do is it's going to say void on trigger enter collider collider. And this is a function that gets triggered a, uh, by the Unity uh, engine when a rigid body enters a trigger, which are these things. So we can say uh, debug.log enter trigger. And we can use this uh, for testing. So if you look, this ball should enter the trigger and it should say a message when it does so. Entered the trigger. See? So, but instead of this, we want to say collider dot get component, and get component means that you're accessing one of these components on the object, right? And we want to access the script, which is just called ball, and then we want to call reset. Okay, and let's go up this guy's speed to ten, so he goes bounces around a little bit faster. And if you look, it keeps resetting it to some position, unless it bounces up and down forever. We'll fix that later on, though. Okay, so it's kind of doing what we want, uh, but we not we're not tracking score yet. We're just resetting it when it hits something, and the enemy also isn't doing anything. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and add some AI for the enemy. So let's go add a new script called enemy and drag this to the enemy and an enemy is going to is going to be pretty much the same thing as the player except for one other a couple other things so it's going to have a public float speed it's also going to have a public game object ball ref and this is going to contain the reference to the ball and so you'll see that it has some sort of game object attached to it. I know it says none. I want you to click on the ball and then drag it to this area and then drop it in. So now it can now it's looking at the ball. And what that means is that it can access the ball from this object. So we want our paddle to move with the ball. If the ball goes up, we want the paddle to go up, and if the ball goes down, we want the paddle to go down. So there are a couple ways of doing that, and the easiest is to say ball ref dot transform dot position dot y is greater than transform dot position dot y. We want to do something; otherwise, we want to do something else. So if the ball's position is greater than our position, then we want to move up. I'm going to translate speed. Oh, new vector zero comma speed zero. Same way we did with the player. And the same way over here. Now, click play, we can see how this looks. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, wait, speed zero. So, give this guy some speed. We gave our paddle five, we'll give him five. Uh, but yeah, he's waking out because time dot delta time. So, times time dot delta time times. It's very important that you actually use this thing. And now if we click it, he tries to play poorly, but he still tries.
This ball likes to bounce a lot. But alright, so you see he's moving, so that's fine. And then he's moving up when the ball is going up and down when the ball is going down. Which is pretty much what we want. Um, now we need to track goals and... Hmm, pretty much just goals. So, let's go ahead and create another object, empty game object. I'm going to call this the uh, game... Um, I'm going to call this the game world. Doesn't really matter. Um, we're just going to drag the player goal, the enemy goal, the enemy, player, and the ball into this thing. But you see I didn't actually set this stuff. So it's extremely important that you set everything to zero when you when you parent objects to something. Otherwise it really messes things up later on. Alright. Uh, so we want to add in some text. So you have GUI text and 3D text. We're going to add a GUI text in. And we're going to position this at 0, 0, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So G GUI text works as though it's on the camera, with 1 being all the way over and 0.5 being in the middle and 0 being at the other edge. So if it's all the way, it's all the way over at 1, you can't really see it. You can slide it back in a little bit, mainly because, you know, the text has actual letter words on it. That's fine. So just slide this thing up, maybe... like here. It's not too bad. 94. And we're going to call this player. Score. And we're going to go ahead and rename this object to player score. Control C. So we can duplicate it. And call this one enemy score. It is annoying to position stuff. 85? Uh, let's go with 80. Alright, so enemy score and player score, and we want to rename the one that says enemy score to enemy score on the top. Alright, uh, but we're not done. We also need, we need two more uh, GUI texts. So you can go ahead and, and duplicate this one. And these are going to contain some number. For now, it's going to be zero. And it was at 0 0.94. 0.94. Okay, you can drag this one to the player. It's at 0 0.1. Let's go with 0 0.15. So 94, and it should be like 85. Oh, 90. 95. Okay. So now we kind of have a little HUD for our game. It's very hard. You can't really use the inspector for this. You have to position it on the uh, actual object. Or the game, the game view. Um, so yeah, that's all we gotta do for this. Let's go rename these. All right, so this is gonna be the player amount, and that would make this one the enemy 
that now. And we're going to go ahead and create one more empty object. Position this at 0, 0, 0. Go ahead and call this the um, score tracker. And drag these things inside of it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, click on any of the links on the screen to view uh, our other videos, and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.